Good morning, church. Praise God. It's great to be in the house of the Lord this morning. God loves you, and I love you. And uh, I have to tell you, it seemed a little quiet in here before we started. So let's stand to our feet and greet neighbor and tell him you're glad to see him here. Tell him Merry Christmas, joy to the world. Merry Christmas, choir. Okay, you may be seated. We have got some awesome things going on here at the church tonight. At 7 o'clock, we're going to have the Christmas concert, and, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a great time. The choirs have all put a lot of work into this, and it's going to be a wonderful production, and we've got some uh, uh, refreshments afterwards, so at 7 o'clock, please plan to attend that. Uh, now, tomorrow is the food pantry day. And so the volunteers uh, to unload the truck we need to be here. Uh, the truck should be here about 10. So if you can get here sometime before that. Uh, and of course, we're still having the Wednesday night dinner uh, on Wednesday evening. Over at Patterson uh, on Thursday night, we're having the uh, family night at the Patterson Methodist Church. It's going to be a soup supper. So uh, they enjoy having you Winterset folks come over for that. It's, it's, they have a, a really great time of fellowship. Does anybody else have any... Uh, pardon me? Okay, the Living Nativity on December 21st and 22nd. It's out at the historical site. It starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, and so that is a great thing. Uh, and uh, so please plan to put that on your, your calendar. Next Sunday is going to be a special Sunday because we have three baptisms. We've got the Manny kids are all going to be baptized. And their old dad, Tyson, who's all of 27, We're going to receive Tyson is in as a member of the church next Sunday. So please come and plan to attend that. You know, uh, so are there any others that we need to talk about, choir? Okay. All right. Uh, Nancy? Good morning. What a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord and rejoice and praise with you. Uh, please join, uh, stand and join me in the call to worship. Let all who love God rejoice. Let all who thirst for justice, for water from the well of God's salvation. Let all who long for Christ sing for joy. Let all who hunger for righteousness return home to the living God. Let all who seek the Spirit shout aloud. Let all who yearn for mercy fall on their knees before the throne of God. Please join us in our opening hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory, found on page 220 in your hymnal.
It is a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it has been. It feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab a hold of those who are home for us, who make home for us, whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them again. It is joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else, and then to live like that was our truth even now, even here. It is joy to go home. John the Baptist reminds us, however, that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve and give and care for others, by how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, the candle of hope and of peace and of joy, as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. It is time to go home. From the Book of Common Prayer, for the third Sunday of Advent, let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely, sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord God, this morning, we want to celebrate the joy, the joy of home, the joy of uh, the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. We want to celebrate the joy that you have imparted into us. We want to celebrate the joy that you have given us through your word, Lord God. Lord, today I know that not only, but not everyone has joy every single day. That at times we have days that don't go very joyful. So for those, Lord God, today that need a special touch in their body of healing, we lift them up to you. We ask, Lord God, that you touch them with the healing anointing of joy. For those who are estranged from family and loved ones this Christmas, this Christmas season, Lord, I ask for healing and forgiveness and uh, restoration of those relationships. For those who have lack this season, Lord God, I ask that you supernaturally provide for uh, uh, whatever it is that they need this Christmas season. We're careful to give you honor and praise and glory, Lord God. And we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. This morning, we're going to cover some of the same ground that we covered the last couple of weeks in Scripture. I'm going to read to you uh, from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 19, and then I have a couple more verses that I'm going to read to you that's not going to be on your screen. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, uh, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. I'm going to back up and I'm going to read to you uh, from verse 10 in Luke chapter 2. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And in verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on peace and on earth peace among those whom he favors. I'm going to read to you from uh, Philippians chapter four, uh, verses Four through seven. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds 
in Christ Jesus. This morning's sermon is entitled, The Joy of Home. We're still out there on this setting on the plains outside of Bethlehem, where the shepherds are taking care of their sheep. And the angel of the Lord is, uh, has come to them, and the bright light has shone all around them, and they're afraid, and they don't know what's going on. And then the angel proclaims to them, do not be afraid. For see, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. So they're out there. They're out there on the plains. And they have, uh, <laughs> they have just had this visitation from an angel. They were afraid. And now all of a sudden this angel tells them, hey, don't be afraid because I'm, I bring you good news of great joy. And I think they experienced this great joy after they had figured out what was going on. And then later on they gave praise to God. And uh, the angel says to them, glory to God in the highest in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. I think God had favored these, these shepherds out there by giving them this message. So they experienced joy. They experienced peace. They experienced hope. That experience was carried on when they uh, were in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, after his birth, when Joseph and Mary welcomed them into the stable. They experienced joy uh, at the, the birth of the new king. Mary and Elizabeth had experienced joy when they had the, uh, the new reunion after they hadn't seen each other for so long. And Mary was looking for a place of hope and a place of peace. And they experienced great joy, the joy of home, the joy of Mary coming home to someone that was very familiar to her. The baby that Elizabeth was carrying, that we know as John the Baptist, leaped for joy in his mother's womb as uh, she, uh, as he knew that he was in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom Mary was carrying in her womb. Great joy. I think we associate this time of the year with joy. Even the commercials on TV have capitalized on this theme of joy. I saw the other night on Walmart commercial even. Uh, uh, this couple had to scramble around because their, uh, their relatives said, well, we've changed our mind. We're going to come to your house. And so guess what? They go to Walmart and they buy all this stuff and get ready to fix a great meal and it closes with these beautiful Walmart bags that says joyfully. You didn't know Walmart could bring you so much joy, did you? <laughs> uh, so why is it that sometimes we don't always experience joy? There's something that uh, that's kind of relatively new to me, maybe not to some of you, but what they call a blue Christmas, because people at this time of year sometimes don't uh, relish the joyful time, and they experience down times. They have uh, times of regret and times of, uh, uh, you know, things just haven't gone well around Christmas time. 
And so they get in kind of a blue funk, if you will. And so there we have a blue Christmas. Uh, I was watching on uh, TV the other day, one of the, one of the religious TV stations. And one of the televangelists there, he says, uh, he makes this bold claim. He says, I don't ever have a down day. I never have a down day. It's because I've got the word of God in me. I don't ever have a down day. I wanted that guy's telephone number because I wanted to call him and say, well, good for you. Uh, because I think I've got the word of God in me, maybe not as much as he's got in him, but I have down days. And I wanted to tell him so bad. You know what? You tell that young mom that's got two little boys with ear infections and snotty noses, and uh, they've been up all night coughing, and she's got to go to work the next day, and she hasn't had any sleep. You tell her that uh, you don't have any down days. Tell that person that's facing uh, serious uh, health problems that are in and out of the hospital that you never have a down day because you've got the word of God in, them, in you. Uh, you tell the person that's blindsided by uh, someone and gets into uh, some conflict or argument and it ruins your whole day, tell them that you never have a down day. You know, folks, life happens. Life happens where you, you have down days. But yet, here in the scripture, it says uh, that the angels were praising God uh, and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And didn't it, doesn't the scripture also say, do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Doesn't God favor all of us? Doesn't God want us to all experience great joy? Well, I think he does, but here's the deal. Is that life happens. Life happens, and it's pretty tough to stay on top uh, with a joyous expression all the time. But I got to thinking about that TV preacher, and maybe, maybe choir, he's on to something a little bit here. Maybe he's got something here about the Word of God and uh, not having a down day not experiencing the joy of the Lord. Well, maybe partially, partially. One of the things that I've noticed here with Becky, you know, Becky had surgery here a couple of weeks ago, and she's doing just fine. Uh, she's doing marvelous. And... Uh, uh, I've hidden her little bell that she has that she rings every time she wants me to do something for her. No, I just made that up today. No. But after her surgery, she experienced pain. But one of the things that I've noticed is that if she gets ahead of the, of the pain uh, with her pain medications, uh, she can somewhat... Uh, manage this the threshold of pain that she has. But she has to do it before. Before the pain, she experiences pain. After the pain, she's in trouble. 
she hurts. So she's learned how to, she's figured that out. And so maybe it is with the Word of God that if we make the Word of God our confession, that if we get it into our minds and into our spirit, uh, speak it with our mouth, maybe. Maybe there is something to this that we can enjoy the joy of the Lord even when we are having a down day. All you have to do, here's my prescription. All you have to do is get on Google or, you know, your phone and type in there uh, scriptures about joy. First thing that comes up is there's 49 scriptures that have to do with joy. I think that if we can be a little bit intentional, a little bit proactive, that when life happens like that, we can experience a little bit of the joy of the Lord even in the midst of all of that. Let me read you just a few. Just a few of the, I won't read all 49 of them, but maybe five or six. Use this like medicine. Use this like a prescription. I'm practicing pharmacy without a, without a license, Jessica. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Uh, the Lord your God, that was 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah 3, 17. Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Of course, I just read Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Psalm 94, 19 says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Psalm 118, 24. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Isaiah 61.10 I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Ah, my final one is John 16, 24. Until now, you've not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Maybe that TV preacher did have something there. That there is a correlation between the word of God and imparting joy into us. God wants us to have the joy this season as we draw closer and closer to and uh, anxiously await the Lord Jesus Christ of arrival. The joy of home. We want you to experience joy as you receive relatives into your home. As you have family and friends into your home. May you be the light and light of Christ when maybe they are having a down day. Maybe you can help them experience some joy. Uh, I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. Uh, about this time of year, 42 years ago, 
uh, my grandparents went to, uh, I took a bus tour uh, to South Florida, to Miami. And, uh, but prior to that, my granddad was busy putting together uh, an Advent um, devotional, kind of like the upper room. But anyway, it was written by people out of his church. It was down there in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, where my folks live today. And that's where they were raised. My grandparents lived back then. And so Grandpa put this all together. And he wrote a couple of those articles. I think I've read a couple of them here in, in church in Advent season. Uh, and so then he got it all done, and he took it in, got it all printed up, and took the books in to the minister because uh, they were going to have to start giving them out. And uh, my grandparents were going on this bus tour. So they got down there uh, in South Florida, and, uh, uh, well, on, well, uh, let me back up a little bit here. Uh, granddad went in, and when he was talking to the minister, he started talking about the joy of the Lord and having joy. And uh, somehow they even got off on funerals. And um, so they, my granddad told him, you know, uh, I'd like for my funeral be a joyous time. I'd like for uh, the congregation to sing joy to the Lord, uh, joy to the world. And so uh, when my grandparents got down there to South Florida, my granddad had a massive heart attack and died in the motel room. My grandmother knew that something was wrong with him that day because they were walking on the beach and he kind of hung back from the rest of the group. Uh, so anyway, you, you have to know that it wasn't a very joyous time for my grandmother. And uh, so when they brought him back and we had the funeral, the uh, minister told us this story, and we sang, Joy to the World. So, you know, even when you're having a down day, when things go the wrong way, when things go terribly wrong, there is a way that you can find uh, the joy of home in Christ Jesus, that we can experience joy in adversity. Use the scripture like medicine. Get in and ahead of the pain with scripture. Now, that being said, let me end this with a little higher note. At my funeral, I want you to sing, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Joy to the world and joy to you and me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Our final hymn is number 236, verses 1 through 4. Please stand.
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.